You're not even supposed to be here. This is Disney. Look at that post haircut, Patty Mayonnaise. Yeah. Welcome home, Rep Pack. Marcus here, and welcome to Comfort Cartoons, the show where I collect absolutely everything from the late 90s, 2000s, all the way to the modern day. And I'm also trying to create the world's biggest SpongeBob and the world's biggest Nickelodeon collection. I am the creator of this channel. I actually does have a Funko Pop of her very own. I have one too, but hers is more notable. But I hope every single one of you guys is having an amazing day, and if you guys aren't, you know the drill. Funko Pop removal, camera flip. It's about to get a whole lot brighter rep that because your boy is here. And today, you heard it from the title, you heard it from the camera flip. I am going to be getting rid of all of my Nickelodeon Funko Pops. Every single one of them, we're getting out of here, packing them up in a container, and we're gonna go put it somewhere in a, some kind of land that could be filled. Does that sound like a plan? I mean, I can't say it sounds like a good plan to me, but I mean, I guess Funko did, so I guess it works. A tax write off, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All joking aside, I absolutely love Funko, and I'm not gonna be throwing away any of my Funko Pops, but we are gonna be removing several of them from the collection today. You guys know that I've been talking about it for a while, the renovations, and we did renovate one section. We did renovate a little bit of another section, but overall, we haven't had that much movement in here, and that's because I've been trying to decide what I wanna do with everything and how to best display it for you guys. And honestly, for the longest time I've said it is that the Funko Pops here they have too much real estate like in our spooky shelf all of it is Funko Pops and again I love Funko Pops but I don't necessarily think that we need in our collection to have several variations of the same character and with all the Funko Pops that we removed today we're also gonna be checking their Funko values get a good shot of them and check them out into the collection because some of these we've never gotten to see up close and we're gonna be moving those extras over here to the expanded Funko wall which is gonna be this way I'm gonna be removing that wooden beam up there along with cleaning this whole section up so we can actually line this wall up with our extra Funko Pops so that way we can give the history of Nickelodeon products more real estate and not rely so much on just Funko Pops being in the background of every single shot. And there's Pops everywhere. We have some up there, we have some over here, we have some over here. They're everywhere so we have to go through these, decide which ones are staying, which ones are going. And then in the next video you guys see, we're gonna be renovating these shelves as well and then working our way that direction. And like I said, hopefully by the middle of this year is my goal, the whole room will have have been changed up quite significantly, if not by the end of the year, the entire room. Anyway, let's get into deciding what pops are staying, or in our series, should I stay or should I go now? Funko Pop Removal Edition is <laughs> a different version of it. Anyway, let's get into it. <laughs> Okay guys, so we're gonna be going through these all together and we'll be adding them in. So certain things are gonna be moved and taken out. Like for example, right here, the Tom Kenny signed Funko Pop. Although I do love that this one is signed by Tom Kenny. We do have some other signed Tom Kenny representation with our SpongeBob comic book and also the art card that we got at the Ed Eisner event. So I think we're gonna move this into a separate section so that way we can get some more bigger pieces just like we have right here with our Camp Coral drink cups. These are from Canada and I think they're really, really cute. This one right here is actually an acrylic Gary that came from a salt pepper shaker. Tell me in the comments, what does two holes mean? Is that salt or pepper? But this right here kind of just looks like a meld of way too much going on. So we're gonna remove these guys right here. I'm gonna add our Christmas present SpongeBob up here with the rest of our Sleepy Time figures. So that way it can be a complete set. And we're gonna remove our Tom Kenny signed one just for right now to put it in a different location. And the prototype, I think we are gonna keep around here. So we're gonna put it over here on this empty shelf for right now because as we do the decorating. I think we will incorporate that prototype in somewhere, but our Christmas Tom Kenny signed Funko Pop will be removed for right now. As we remove stuff from these shelves, it just embarrasses me more and more by our paint job. <laughs> you don't see these things when there's items there, but once we get an item there, you won't see that. And then the same thing goes for these right here. Again, guys, we're only removing these small things because very, very soon, these are gonna all be incorporated into the background in a better place, so it's not just everywhere, these little small things. The small things will be in a section, and the bigger things will be more visible. So all these little tiny pieces we're gonna put over here to the side is something that we're gonna keep on the side for our decorating purposes and Patrick is also going to be removed the only reason why we're gonna be removing Patrick is again guys this is the Spongebob section how many different Patrick's could I count we have Patrick representation his representation doesn't need to be in a Funko Pop which I love again and we do have his Funko Pops which we won't be removing over there on that side of the room very very soon but since we do have so many Patrick's I want to save room for other brands and other different types of Patrick's and we'll put this Funko to the side and I'm not gonna continue to say that 
through the whole video because I'm not gonna lie I feel bad I feel bad removing them because they're all my babies But the thing is we have so many representations of Spongebob Do we need to have five or six of them in Funko fashion? Not necessarily So that's why we're gonna be doing it because we want to represent all things in the Nickelodeon history And that'll be my final note on that And then we are gonna keep the pride Spongebob and also the imagination one But we are not gonna be keeping it right here We're gonna be putting that one right over here for right now and for the diamond exclusive one We will be removing this one from the collection considering we have this one right here being the pride one and up there You'll see we have the imagination that we haven't even got to mention yet So we have three variations of the same pop and again I love Funko and I love the pops they make but if we need three of the same exact pop not necessarily Do I need them all in my background? I could probably stick with just one Okay, and then down here again a little random shelf here This was just kind of stuff that we put here just kind of fill it in But now that we've gotten so much stuff in the collection this guy can be really associated with some of our smaller figures along with this cake topper and this guy right here although I do love this memo box it's a pretty accessible piece and I would definitely like to put this somewhere over with our files not necessarily something that needs to be in such a premium real estate spot like a singular cabinet like this and down here we can see there's still a little bit ignore all the dust guys we're, we're the cleaning process this guy right here this is the Spongebob rivet exclusive and this one has the jelly fishing net and this one I've always just didn't like how it's like you can't I love the pop but the box <laughs> The box is so annoying. This box right here, again, we're gonna be keeping a lot of the SpongeBob Funko Pops, so this one's gonna be getting removed too. Like I said, this is the removal video, so I'm gonna be removing a lot of SpongeBob Pops. I hope you guys understand, but look at how much real estate. That was just Pops, dude. Mostly There's just like pops. five, six shelves now. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that was just Pops. So now on this shelf, I do like the, the idea of pushing all the Funko Pops back. So that's what we're gonna be doing with these guys right here too, because if we push them all the way back, that still allows them to be in the background, but we also have all this room now that we can just display stuff and they can just kind of be a background piece more than rather the focal point of the background. And what we're going to be doing now is we're actually going to be removing all of the Funko Pops up here. And the reason why is I will show you in a second. We're going to be removing Squidward tentacles. We're going to be removing SpongeBob SquarePants. And we're going to be removing Patrick. And I hate to do it, but I'm going to be removing every single one here. But bear with me for a reason. This is like a tragedy happening. <laughs> I know everything's going. These are my two favorite Funko Pops for SpongeBob the line too. Mermaid Man a Barnacle Boy are just sick pops. And I love this one right here, the Weightlifter Spongebob. Because, <laughs> yeah. you know, that inspires me every day to go out there and train. But I just want to be as strong as Spongebob one day. But the reason why is because we are going to be moving these Funko Pops over here. So I'm removing all of these pops. They were stacked here with all of their shoes, but the main reason why is because we don't typically even film this direction. And these are the original Funko Pops, probably the best representation of their Funko Pop form. I think that these belong in the actual background where you guys can see them more consistently. And if we want to put those other pops that we took out over here, we could always do that. All right, so let's start this the way it should be. We're gonna start <laughs> with Patrick right here. Then we're gonna go with Squiddy right here. And then we're gonna go with the Sponge right here. And then we've got Mr. Krabs. And then we've got Sandy. And then we have the Hot Topic original Spongebob to complete that original set. We're gonna be putting that right over here. So now we have them all in there leveled. And for right now, I wanted to put an original pop there. But if they ever release a Karen and Plankton pop, which is something we need, then that would be going right up there. So let's fix up our little mini figures right here. And then we can see this new shelf, I think looks a lot better here in the background for key representation of those same characters. Okay, so there we have them. And then if we also want to, if we have taller mini figures in the future, we can always put these guys up here behind here as well too so really make those guys more of a background feature because we have so many different pieces that we want to display and moving all that stuff made my bunko pineapple accessible again so now i can add it to the rest of my pineapples <laughs> Okay guys, so there was a clip that was right here of me talking about all the different grails and which ones we're keeping and taking out, but something happened to that clip. So moment of silence and RIP for the forgotten clip that you'll never see. But we did add some stuff to the shelf. We kept some stuff like the Shellibration SpongeBob, the Amazon exclusive SpongeBob, the signed by Steven Hillenburg and Tom Kenny SpongeBob, the Amazon exclusive Fun Funko Pop. And of course I wanted to keep Bang Geek, very celebrational type pop, so I wanted to have it there. And because the Cartoon Cavern does celebrate all people and all love and acceptance i want to make sure we put the pride spongebob right up here in the grail shelf so i think this is a perfect setup for right now if i were to remove any i think it would be this guy right here or these two just to kind of add in more grail factors to it but either way it looks freaking amazing <laughs> 
And we also have the SpongeBob movie sponge on the run display. It has three Funko Pops as well, along with my childhood glasses. I still can't see, but I don't think these are gonna help. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna keep those exactly where they are because eventually this whole display is gonna become a whole tribute to the SpongeBob movies and it's gonna have to locate all of our SpongeBob movie related products. And those Funkos are a part of that. And it may not seem like we've done much, but hey, this has all been removed. And again, some of these are gonna be relocated. Like I can say for sure, these are gonna be relocated in a more visible spot still. But a majority of these guys will be going up in our expanded collection where you'll still be able to see them. We'll still be able to grab them and access them, but not as clearly as some of the grills that we have here in the background now. But these guys for sure, I gotta keep them somewhere visible. And I also gotta take out the plastic wrap. And you can see the pops a lot better now I took all this plastic off. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready for the real gutting now? Yeah. <laughs> now we're real not, good. Maybe not really, but now it has really, to be done. <laughs> yeah, it has to be done. Just because, guys, we cannot, like I said, we cannot let Funko just dominate the entire cartoon cavern. We love, love, love Funko, but we're trying to represent everything in this collection here. So, let's go ahead and get started here. We did pass by this guy right here, the 10-inch Funko Pop with SpongeBob. That guy's really grill worthy. I'm gonna keep him back there. I think he deserves it. You okay? <laughs> Mitchell just scraped his head on the front of that shelf. Make sure you hit the like button for that. Just okay, so for right now, now, I think these are all chases, so I think we do the same thing we did with the SpongeBob shelf. They don't have to be the focal point. Like they can still be back there, you know what I mean? And then we have like other figures and stuff like that. Like if we want to move up, like Ren and Stimpy and all these things. But all of this stuff, again, that's going to be saved for another video where we start organizing and decorating it. But you guys are about to see these shelves get really empty because now we're getting to the Ren and Stimpy section. And you guys can see we have Ren and Stimpy Chase. We have regular Ren and Stimpy. We have the Happy Happy Joy Joy Ren and Stimpy. We <laughs> We have the Happy Happy Joy Joy Adorables by Funko. And then we have the Ren and Stimpy Adorables also by Funko. So let's go ahead and start to do some removals. <laughs> so I am gonna say for sure, we are gonna keep the Happy Happy Joy Joy there. And we are gonna keep the Chases of Ren and Stimpy up here. But we are gonna be removing all of the Adorables. We are gonna be removing the Rock Adorable. We are gonna be removing the Stimpy Adorable. The addiction is setting in. I mean, Dorbs. 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 And also Daisy got this one. Oh no. <laughs> Yeah, the other ones are fine, but Daisy got that one. And then we're gonna be removing this one too. And again, we're gonna keep these in the collection. They're not going anywhere. But when it comes to our main background that is on screen all the time, we don't need this many Funko Ren and Stimpies. All right, so now we got those guys. We got a lot still to do though. So let's move these guys down here temporarily from our Filbert Cup. Filbert Cup is going inside. We got some Filberts and this guy, he's gonna go inside because I just feel like this is risky. Yeah. <laughs> don't like keeping ceramic cups up here usually because they're just, they're too slippery. So then also we got the Heifer and Ron Rocco, we are gonna be taking out because again, we have the chase of Heifer and Rocco right there. So their representation in Funko form are already there. We love Rocco, we love Heifer, and they're gonna get even more representation here coming in the future. But in Funko fashion, I think it's time that they take a side to the rest of the Funko Pops. And I said the same thing about these guys, so let's remove them. And then the only thing that's staying there, dude, is look, <laughs> yeah, the one little happy, happy joy joy. And again, guys, this may look like a mess right now, but eventually, very soon in the coming video, this is gonna be renovated too. We're gonna be adding some new stuff into the background right here. And maybe you may see some of the Funko Pops relocate there in order to fill up a certain space. But for right now, we're just trying to keep what's necessary and what's not necessary out since we have a many representations of Ren and Stimpy, including the Happy Happy Joy Joy of their original form and also their chase forms. I think that should do it. All right, so now for our spooky shelf, which has been dominated by Funko Pops and most of it being Gur. Yeah, <laughs> Gur is the main one. Exactly, I wanna do so much of this spooky shelf. You guys may have seen during the Halloween time on my Instagram, I posted a picture of these very items right here. And I actually had some little like snow that was on the shelf for Christmas time. And I was able to turn it into a green type of smoke using a green LED. And I would love to do that on this entire shelf. And I think it'd be an awesome effect to have it like that. But as of right now, <laughs> we don't have any room to do that because there's too much gur and stuff like that. So we're gonna remove some of that stuff so we can have some more figures here. And I think we will keep some Funko Pops actually on this shelf more than we did in others. But the gur has gotta be moved. There's too many gurs. We have gur with cupcake. We have just Gur, lacking anything. He doesn't have even a cupcake, poor guy. We have Robot Gur, very cute. We have regular Gur again, but it's a hot topic glow in the dark one. And then we've got Robot Gur pre-release, which is the same pop, but it's just released earlier. Yeah. <laughs> so that's all Gur. And then we have the Zim and Gur on the pig right here. But just for some piece of, you know, having them all together, I am gonna put at least one of the original Gurs here. So we are gonna leave the hot topic glow in the dark Gur. So we have his full representation right here. And we do have one Zim Pop that we need to get. I think I'll remove this one and put that Zim Pop there. And then we have the Gur with Pizza. Yes, and then we have the Gur with Pizza, 
which will also be going to the expanded, as you can see, because there's, there's a lot of too girth. much girth. Okay, and then for the shelf right here, we are actually going to be keeping this relatively the same in some regards. So what we will be removing actually is we are going to remove the Freddy Funko as Danny Phantom, and that's going to relocate into more of like a Grail type of space, probably somewhere over here by the arcade cabinets, or maybe even somewhere by the bookshelf, somewhere more isolated by himself as a Freddy Funko. And then we'll keep Danny because this is the spooky shelf, and we don't have any Danny representation outside of the Funko. So for right now, that's what we got. Okay, so I brought Freddy back because we put Danny down here. Again, we don't have a lot of Aro Monster representation outside of Funko Pop, so we're keeping those. So the Danny one, it kind of just sits here awkwardly otherwise. So for right now, we're gonna keep the Funko Pop Danny Phantom also with the Danny right here. And look at how much space we just cleared up. Like realistically, like we have all this now. And I mean, realistically, I also would be down to remove the Zim and Gur on the pig because we have this one out of the box in the room already. So I already got a little bit of representation of that one too. But for right now, we're gonna keep it. So it's not too bare. We're gonna keep it like this. But you guys are seeing things are really starting to open up here. And all these minifigures are just kind of here right now because you know we don't want to move them around. But they'll be readjusted as we add new pieces into the collection. All right, Doug, you gotta go, fam. You gotta go. <laughs> Garfield has dominated you. <laughs> you can clearly see of these two who is my favorite. But you're not even supposed to be here. You are Disney. Look at this. This is Disney. Look at that post haircut patty mayonnaise. Yeah. My, that's not my patty mayonnaise. This is my patty mayonnaise. This is the Disney Doug, which I'm not even as big of a fan of as the original Nickelodeon Doug, to be honest. So I have these here because they were, you know, at the time we started this collection, they were a good representation of Doug. Now we can take all of these out of here. But I'm going to be bearing on Doug because I love Doug, the Nickelodeon classic. You know, he's such a kind kid. The show is so simple and fun. I want to be kind on Doug. So we are going to relocate him down here. I moved the video now disc we had to the mixed media. Doug is getting one final chance down here for a little bit. We got to dust around here, guys, a little bit. So, you know, don't judge the dust. But this is where they're going to be going for right now, just for the meantime. And if we ever get anything, anything that'd be better for this spot, <laughs> we will move them to the expanded section. They will still have a place in here, though, because of the, the small hook they had left in on the Nickelodeon brand that I love. It's just the fact that they're the Disney and seeing that Disney logo, they're always kind of bothers me a little bit. But now that we have all the Garfields up front here, we are going to be completely letting that domination happen by moving the Garfield Funko Pops <laughs> in here. <laughs> and until we get more Garfield Pops, we are going to have to put the Blue's Clues ones in there. So we have Blue, the Flock, and also the regular Blue's Clues one. And you know, with the whole renovation of what we've been doing here, I typically would be taking one of these out. But because we don't have anything else in this particular space, we are going to be putting the two Blue's here and also be putting a Steve Funko pop that I didn't get to share with you guys in here as well from the fall convention. So we're gonna be putting Steve right in here. Put these guys together a little bit. If only we had John. You mean Joe? There's Joe, there's Steve, there's Josh. There's a lot of J's, but there ain't no <laughs> John, okay? You're talking about John Arbuckle. Yeah. Because it would have split up the, the humans that could have been friends, you know? Yeah, exactly. But then we do have a little what you're gonna see here in a second. We do have the blue right here that we can go ahead and put right here to kind of blend in with this section. We're gonna be moving all of our Garfield dissectables up here where they were before. All all right, so now Garfield domination is in full process. We do have the Blues Clues Funko Pops, but again, I feel like they're gonna eventually, I think there is other Garfield Funko Pops I'm gonna look out for. I think there's one of him holding a cup that says I hate Mondays. I think I have it in the collection. I just don't know where it's at. If I can find that one, we're gonna add it along with any other Garfield Pops they release. But also the blue representation, it makes a lot of sense here because you have blue down here and not just that right up here on the top, we have a full Blues Clues section. So it all works in this whole section right here. But now let's move on to this shelf that I obviously it because I didn't really know what to do with it. This shelf is probably the shelf that is going to see the most changes because we are going to be removing the cat dog Funko Pops. We will be keeping this guy right here and we will probably be adding that up to that top shelf now that we have so much space. We'll be keeping this Funko Pop on display but we will be removing the common one and putting that with the rest of the Funko Pops so removed. And some of this stuff is going to be moved as well but all of this small stuff is going to be for its own video where we're going to be redecorating this shelf now that we've removed all the Funko Pops. But for the Wild Thor Thornberries, very similar to what we did with the Aro Monsters and Danny Phantom. There's not a lot of representation that we have in the collection right now outside of the Funko 
Funko Pops. So we will be keeping those Funko Pops. And I did add Spike here because he was from Rugrats Gone Wild. But now I think Spike would make a lot more sense with the rest of the babies over there with the Paramount Plus ones, even though this is the original Spike. Okay, and like I said, all the minifigures for right now, those are to be readjusted. But this is going to be a little bit of a Wild Thornberry section right here. We'll have the Pops represented. I got to take these plastics off of them too. But all the renovations, we're about removing Pops today. So that little section right there is going to stay because of the fact, like I said, you don't have a lot of Wild Thornberry stuff. But in the future, hopefully that'll change and we can actually add some more key Wild Thornberry items because there are some that exist. All right, guys, so we are on our final shelf right here. And honestly, with all these pops, I'm going to have to make part of the renovation changing out with some fresh pop protectors. So ignore some of the glares, fingerprints on the pop protectors. A lot of these pops have been moved around many a times and are always being adjusted. So those pop protectors do get some abrasions here and there. So we're going to have to change those out. But as far as the Reptar Funko Pops go, I mean, there's this one right here, the Chase one. We have the Common. We have the FYE. We have the Glow in the Dark. We have the King Reptar one, which is the one that Mitchell made for us, which is so awesome. Before he even was working here as a kid, cameramans i mean way back an amazing piece and we also have the prototype reptar as well that was sent in by one of you beautiful people and you guys have been asking about the funko nfts and i'm gonna be a hundred percent honest i don't really feel a hundred percent comfortable supporting the whole nft concept i'm a physical collector this is what i love and this is what i do so the whole idea of the nft thing rubs me the wrong way i'm just being honest i love you guys if you love nfts i hope that you understand just my perspective and there's certain Pops that I really do want from the NFT line of Funko Pops they've released, but under the guise of me having to support something that I don't wholeheartedly like, kind of feels like a little bit redundant of the whole passion of this whole thing. So I will be getting certain ones and I'll have to pay a little bit of a resale price. Like I do want to get the Vlad Plasmias and I do want to get the Embers because I want them in my collection. I hate that they're behind this NFT wall, but it is what it is. And I want to get the Freddy Funko as a Reptar. He's got the Freddy Funko crown. I literally think it was made to be in this collection. So I do want them those ones. I really don't love the NFT thing. I don't know how all of you guys feel about it. And again, if you enjoy the NFTs, more power to you. I totally respect it and collect whatever you want and let others collect whatever they want. That's how I always feel. But for me, I love physical collectibles and I do know that there's NFT tied to it, but I feel like it's just a whole thing to get people that are into physical pops to buy the non-existent ones. So those are the ones I'm going to try to get. So for right now, all of these Reptars are staying and maybe when we get that Reptar as Freddy Funko, I may remove the common Reptar from the background since we do have the chase reptar here for representation and that way we can keep it all exclusives or like you know really close related friend ones or really ones that are personal to the collection so those are all going to be staying there and again now that we have all this space we moved that back we can start migrating some of our reptar figures over here so they can be a little bit more displayable and we can put some more premium real estate stuff up here on the main center shelf and the adorbs you've been replaced in my mind with a new thing called adorable so i do love these adorbs there's 4,000 pieces of each of them. They're very cool. I even have the Reptar one, I think somewhere up here. But we will be removing these guys. And again, they will be staying in the collection, but just not here in the premium real estate of the background. And for Tommy, Chucky, and also Angelica, we are gonna be temporarily taking them out. And the only reason why is because I, right now we are going to find a place for them into the collection. But the thing is, is that we have a lot of amazing Rugrats, Angelica themed stuff that we could put here in the background. So I wanna prioritize that stuff up first and then we can always get these guys squeezed in there in other spots but for right now we're going to remove them and on screen we also have the entire Rugrats Paramount line that they've released which I'm going to be reviewing very soon so we have a lot of representation of all these characters in here and again do not worry these guys are one of my favorites in the entire set so they're still going to have an awesome place here in the collection though okay and now for this shelf there's going to be some similarities to some of the other shelves we don't have a lot of representation of everybody but I do rather prefer the GameStop exclusive Banana Gerald and Banana Arnold here so we we are going to be removing the Arnold and Gerald. We will be keeping the Helga Pataki just because that is the only Helga Pataki pop that we've gotten so far. And we are going to be removing the Norbert and Daggett that is from this shelf because we have the Norbert and Daggett that are currently right here already. But at the same time, I would love some more Angry Beaver stuff in the collection. We don't got much except for this. <laughs> that's amazing so the rest of these guys are going to be staying and again to be reorganized here in our next video coming up and if you look the rest of the way down i think that completes all of our funko pops there is no more funko pops that are left here and if we go over here to this side i mean we have one funko pop up there and that's peppa which is technically only a temporarily owned nickelodeon license not like uh, ninja turtles or garfield where it's completely owned i think peppa is only like partially owned so we have peppa up there for right now and she'll stay up there but without further ado let's just as 
we've reviewed all the Nickelodeon pops that we had in here, let's check out the ones we had in the vault previously. And then we're gonna move all of these ones into that section. And then we're gonna update where we're at. And then the next video, like I said, we're gonna be showing you guys how I'm gonna be decorating this along with a bunch of tips and advice on how you can decorate your own collection. So I hope you guys are enjoying this updated look at all of the different Nickelodeon Funko Pops that we have in the collection currently to kind of see where we're at with it. And as we continue to grow it, up here is a lot of Avatar related pops. We have Aang on Scooter, we have Aang with Momo, Appa, Admiral Zhao, Fire Lord Ozai, Zuko, Azula, Iroh, Toph, Sokka, Katara, the Cabbage Man in his cart, and the whole Rugrats line that I'm going to be doing an updated video on very soon along with our Powdered Toast Man and Pork Job down there. Okay, so coming down from the rafters up there, we have so much work to do. You guys can see there's so much emptiness. There's some spaces that still have some pops, but we are going to be working hard to re-add to these spaces with a bunch of awesome stuff we've collected over this time. I have no doubts we're gonna be able to fill in all those spots, no problem. But thank you guys for joining me on this journey of kind of changing around the entire cavern. The cavern's always gonna be a thing that we're working on and changing and updating all the time. And that's what makes it so fun. And also I get to do all of it with you guys and that's what makes it so special for me as well. So thank you guys so much for being the amazing people you guys are. I love you, I appreciate you. But without further ado, you guys know the drill. We gotta check out what we do got going on for right now. So let's do it. Scan it. On that note, it finishes up everything for today. We got a lot of work to do here. But if you guys enjoyed this video, thank you so much for riding along this journey with me. I appreciate it so much. Make sure you smack the like button. Subscribe if you're new here. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Like I said, if you guys get the like button, it helps out a lot. So I'd really appreciate that. And also, check out this video on your screen over here, which is another video I know you're going to love. I'll see you guys over there. And as always, Rat Pack, I'll see you beautiful people in the next one. Adios. Bloop.